This week on the Computer Chronicles, cyber music. Even little kids can create music on a computer with this new Sim toy from Maxis called Sim Tunes. Want to be a DJ? You can become a multi-track master with this nifty piece of software from Mixman. Even if you can't play any musical instrument, you can use your voice to compose music on your computer. And you can actually learn to play the piano with nothing but a keyboard, a PC, and some software. Plus, a look at a hot new band that found fame on the internet and a visit to a new music research center where they're working on the computer music of the future. All this plus Giles Online, this week's computer news, my pick of the week, coming up next on the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by SoftSource Incorporated, publishers of Pro One Software, educational software for young adults. And by Upside, the business magazine for the technology elite. Hi, and welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe. Music and mathematics have always had a strange similarity, despite the fact that music seems an artistic endeavor and mathematics seems a cold science. But music, in essence, is a combination of sounds, all of which can be described by numbers. So it's not surprising that number-crunching computers have become a tool for musicians. In fact, computers can open the door to the world of music even if you don't know anything about it. And I guess, Michael, that's the idea behind Sim Tunes. Even a little kid can create, compose, and play music just by using this tool. Right. It's a very powerful tool to allow people without any musical background to create their own music. So what are we seeing here? What's going on? What you have here are four bugs moving across the screen. Each one plays a different musical instrument, and I can control what they play by painting. Each color represents a different note, and I have these special notes that make them do things like turn right, turn left, or turn around. So the, the, the bugs that are moving are actually making the sounds. They're a particular instrument, and the little squares they move across are the notes they play, exactly. and the LRX really tells them what order to go in. Exactly. I have tools to, p to paint the scale and random notes and so on. Okay, now how do I pick the bugs? How many different instruments do I have here? You've got 48 different bugs to choose from, uh, which is a neat thing. You can go to this screen and preview the bugs, hear what they sound like, and scroll down and pick out. Some play traditional instruments. And sort of guitar, piano, and some weird things. Some of them talk, I understand, Exactly. Too. Yep. Okay, so I pick my bugs, and let's go back to the main screen then, and show me again, how do I actually write a song? How do I lay these notes down? Well, you can, if, you, if you'd like, you can pick the scale that you're working in. So I get some information about each scale and say, preview the blues scale and decide I want to compose there. So I can actually learn something. If I say I want to play in blues, it will only allow me to play the notes that are in normal blues scales. Exactly. So zoom in here on the blue bug, and now when I paint his notes, I'm only going to paint notes that are within uh -huh. that blues scale. And you can, you can just sort of randomly generate notes just for the fun of it, too, if you're a kid and you just want to mess around. Sure. Yeah, just get in there and see what happens. And I like your tweezer tool. You can actually grab a bug, which I'm sure a kid would like to do, and just move him from one place to another. Sure. Put him in the pattern and see what he sounds right. like over there. All right, now, this also comes with libraries or galleries of predetermined songs and I guess what you call sort of musical pictures. Show us what they are. Yeah, this shows you really what you can do at the upper end of SimTunes once you've figured out all the, all the tools and so forth. You can pick your favorite bugs and create these pictures that are also songs. So I can design the picture and actually the little pixels in there are actually notes that are part of the picture. Exactly. Kind of like a musical piano. And are there recognizable songs in here that, I mean, a kid could play and say, oh yeah, I recognize that too? Sure, yeah. We've included some songs like Mary Had a Little Lamb and, and so on that you could experiment with. All right, how about the higher? What are the stamps? I, th I see a thing called stamps. What does that do? Stamps allow you to actually just go ahead and place, gives you a head start on your painting. Okay, so that's so. a series of notes right there. Exactly. There's their notes and little musical pieces. Yeah. And what age would you say is this for? This is, we're suggesting eight and above, but I've seen kids as, as young as five really enjoy it. And this. I can tell you the adults in our office are addicted to this too, yeah, so it's, it's not just for kids. Thanks a lot, Michael. Thank you. Well, the internet has become a major platform for musicians, allowing new bands to publish their music and be heard without having to deal with the whims of record companies. One band which has found a home on the net is called Mo. We caught up with them at a webcast concert at the Great American Music Hall in San Francisco. On March 1, 1997, a band called Mo sold out its performance at the Great American Music Hall in San Francisco. That might not be unusual, except that the group has never played the West Coast before. In fact, they had hardly traveled outside of New York State, except on the Internet. Any uh, internet presence we had was uh, started by fans, and um, 
there are, there are actually several different sites or places you could visit on the computer uh, today that deal with our set lists, the history of the band, if you just want to meet because we have this common interest. This was Moe's third live webcast. Fans around the world could listen to the music through a software real audio player and even see video snapshots of the performance. Moe's rise to success was helped along by a devoted group of fans, many of whom met on the web. This is, I mean, the internet, at least for Moe, has replaced, you know, hiring college kids to run around and, and tape up flyers on telephone poles. In fact, the band's large web following launched their recording careers. A Sony talent scout discovered the band in a musical chat group while surfing the web. He had no idea what we sounded like. He just listened to descriptions that, or read descriptions that people said, and he uh, was really interested. And he kept trying to get in contact with us, and he kept emailing the wrong person, I guess. And he couldn't believe that we weren't returning his email because yeah. he was from Sony. So he's getting really obsessed with finding us. And he finally, after like two weeks, was able to get in touch with our manager. The new power of the internet as a future competitor has also caught the attention of recording companies. It definitely could happen, you know, um, and, and it's got all the, the record labels, you know, shaking in their boots to a certain degree. Um, when, a, when a really big band decides to take that step and, and, you know, bypass the traditional channels that have been set up, then, then it'll prove that it's happened. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Tom Van Horn. There are two creative aspects to the music business, creating the actual songs and then creating the recordings of those songs. With today's complex recording equipment, the guy who does the mix may have more to do with the success of a CD than the musicians themselves. And I guess, Steve, that's your idea with your mix band stuff, is I can get in there and actually remix a song and, and make it the way I like it. Absolutely. All right, now, let's take a look. What we have here is, this is actually a beta version. You don't have this thing finished yet. You're going to have eight songs here by George Clinton, right? That's correct. And we got one of them up here, Atomic Dog. So, I could just play the song as it was originally recorded if I just bought the music CD? Yeah, that's right. All I'd have to do is hit the, the play button, and it'll actually play that soundtrack from George Clinton. Okay. In the future, if you want, if actually, if you want to go ahead and manipulate that, all I'd have to do is just click the mix button. All right, so that was the original recording. I can go now inside here. You pull all 16 tracks apart for me and say, you put it together the way you want? That's correct. How do I do it? What, okay. what, what's this interface here? Well, basically, this is the interface right here. You've got two turntables. Each turntable has eight bits of sound on, or mm -hmm. eight elements of sound on. And how do I know what they are? Okay, what I do is just hit the help screen right here. Well, I still don't know what they are. I see keys to touch. That's right. Now, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and play. I'll go ahead and play this. And you can see if I go ahead and hit, for example, the M key. It's a bass. Okay. I can either hit it, yeah, this or I can lock it in by dog. hitting the. The bass bar. Okay. okay, so you've well, added that did. bass track now in there and you can go play with something Dog. else. That's right. So I'll, add, I'll add a little rhythm. Dance okay. So the yellow tells me you're manually doing it, the green tells me you've locked it in. That's Dog. correct. I'll go some hi hat. And if I'd like to, I can put some sound in there as well, some voices. Now, what's nice is I can also go ahead and break this down. So if I hit the minus key, Whatever's pressed down, we'll go ahead and, and play. Okay. But I can go right back into my beat. All right, and show us now what some of the other tracks are here. I mean, the W, E, R, all that stuff, so we can get a feel for it. Well, if I want to hit the W, it's just a woof. Oh, okay. Got it. Okay. But I can actually play the drums. So there you're doing it manually. Or again, you can just lock in that drum beat. That's right. Now, can I actually record my mix and hold on to it and then put it up on the net or share it with other Absolutely. people? Absolutely. What you can do, you can actually save, save it as a text file and email it to some of your friends uh -huh. and have Mix Wars. Wow. All right, Nick, there's an options screen here. What are the, some of the choices? Can I change the tempo and that kind of stuff? Yeah, what I do is hit the, the options screen. If I'd like to, I can just change the tempo. And I can slow it down okay. or I can speed it up. But that's the whole song, right? I'm that's taking right. the whole thing and making that's it slower right. or faster? That's right. Yeah. And FX, what's that? That'll actually just break it down a little bit okay. and change the change the beat a little bit. All right, so let's go back to the to the your main screen there. Let's, okay. let's hear this music again. 
All right. So this is going to be George Clinton's greatest hits for Mixed Man, and yeah, I can remix the thing. That's right. It's pretty cool. And it's all synced up, so I, I mean, I'm an idiot. It doesn't matter. It knows to bring the music. Yeah, out. the Mixed Man engine is transparent, so it'll keep everything in sync for you. Steve, so you thanks sound a lot. like a virtual DJ. Okay. Thank you. Well, the ultimate musical instrument is, of course, the human voice. Now you can use just your voice to compose music, even create multi-track instrumental recordings with an incredible piece of software called AutoScore. And Evan, that's what we have up here. How does this work? I just, what, hum into a microphone and then turn it into any instrument I want it to be? That's exactly how it works. You sing or play a tune and AutoScore writes it down for you. Just plug a microphone into your sound card and the microphone comes with AutoScore and then you can just go ahead and record your music into the computer. So AutoScore, I take it, it automatically scores what I'm singing. So not only does it record the sound, but it actually is writing the notes on the staff? That's right. All right, what are we seeing on the screen here now? There's some tracks already down there. Where do they come from? Uh, these are some tracks we brought with us. They're kind of nice background tracks. We have 15 sets of backgrounds. So the software has a library of backgrounds of the, the drums and the piano and all that kind of stuff. That's right. All right, well, uh, can I ask you to sing or do whatever you're going to do here and show how this works? <laughs> okay, I'll go ahead and sing for you. Are you a singer? I'm not a singer, no, but uh, <laughs> I play one on TV. Okay. <laughs> all right, tell us what you're doing. Okay, so basically you just turn auto score on and then hit record in the sequencer and then sing in and the notes appear on screen while you're singing. Okay. All right, I, I will grant you, Evan, you don't sound like a real singer. <laughs> but, I mean, you did this. Now, suppose you were slightly off off key, which a couple of times sounded like maybe you work, and the, can the program take that into account? Sure, in fact, there's a special constraint to key feature which will limit your notes uh, to output in one certain key. So if you know you're going to play something in G major, go ahead and set it to constraint to G major, and any mistakes will be constrained to Is that key. Is there a key. screen in which I can make those kinds of choices? How do I see Sure, you that? just go ahead and go to the menu, go ahead and constrain to, and choose chromatic scale. Okay, so key. make sure everything sticks to the notes in that particular key. All right, let's go back now. Now, how do I decide what instrument I want to turn the voice into? Uh, it's very easy. Just go ahead and click here and choose the instrument. We have it set on a cello now, but you can even change it while you're playing it so you can uh -huh. hear what the different instruments will sound like. All right, so what, what instrument should we turn you into here? Uh, we can go ahead and turn it into, let's try overdrive guitar, kind of okay. make it sound a little, little harsher. And, and let, let's, can we hear your, your song now? Yeah, that'd be great. And the first uh, line of the score is, is the notes you've just sung into the thing. Right? That's right. Now, can I go back inside and edit it, say, well, I didn't really like the note I sang, and I don't have to sing the whole darn thing over again. Can I move notes around and stuff and change the, the timing? Yeah, the great thing is that AutoScore translates this into MIDI data, which is very easy to manipulate. You can add or remove notes, change the instruments, print it out, uh, you know, change the key, do whatever you need so to. So I could print this score and actually take it over to somebody and say, hey, play it. I just wrote this song. <laughs> That's right. All right, now, you sang into it. Can I just, I mean, suppose I can play the guitar or the violin or the flute or something. I could also just play my instrument into the mic. It would do the same thing? That's correct. AutoScore allows you to use your favorite instrument to compose music on the computer. Now, you, have, you only mentioned the word MIDI once, which is kind of a scary word for most people, but is in fact a, a MIDI program? I, if I had a MIDI keyboard, I could actually play into that also? Sure, you can use your MIDI keyboard, and because it's MIDI, it does allow you to do a lot of things with the music. You can put it up on your web page to have it play back. You can, again, edit it, print it out. There are a lot of things you can do with it once it's a MIDI format. But we found that a lot of setups in the past have been expensive and complicated to use because yeah. of all the MIDI hardware required. So you don't really need the MIDI cables. The microphone is really your input. You can use any source of sound. That's right. This is all you need. Yeah. Now, I see at the bottom you've got 16 tracks, I mean, 10 tracks and mixers. What do I do with that? Uh, pretty much you can change the volumes of tracks relative to one another. You can so also I can go in and, and play with those other tracks, not just the one you recorded? That's right. Okay, and what else can I do with this? You, you talk about those restraints. You, there's a bunch of stuff on that menu. What else can I, can I do to control this? Well, you can set it up to whatever instrument you're using. So if you're using a saxophone, the way you try and recognize it is a little different than you try and uh -huh. recognize a human voice. Yeah. Uh, you can also set the interface, set it, you know, more complicated controls such as the MIDI okay. channel. Once again, idiot-proof music composition. That's stuff. right. Thanks, Evan. All right, well, a computer, of course, cannot do everything that a human musician can do. There is style and there's artistry. But at the Center for New Music and Audio Technologies at UC Berkeley, they're working on that, too. The Center for New Music and Audio Technologies, or CINMAT, 
is just a few blocks away from the university campus, but it could be in a different world. It is where musicians and composers mix with scientists and psychologists to explore uncharted musical realms. We're interested in creating a uh, kind of music that can't be created. Um, there are many things that we can have the computer do to us with the sounds that are impossible gesturally. We just don't have that many fingers to control, so we can get very dense sounds. We can also exploit the computer's ability to synthesize sounds that aren't acoustic in origin. Through a programming language called Max, composer Edmund Campion is creating what he calls a musical environment where the same piece will sound different every time it's played, depending on the computer's response. It's a landscape, and so the response is always calculated. I always know how the computer is going to respond, but at the same time, there are hundreds of triggers possible. So that means that there's a great, uh, the landscape is, is fairly broad. Composer and jazz pianist V.J. Iyer has a different goal in mind. He is studying how variations in rhythm can make the difference between a mechanical and human sound. By shifting the beat slightly forward or back, he can program his drum synthesizer to play with a human-like swing. It's a concept that's easier to hear than to describe. A first-time visitor to Sinmat might easily be overwhelmed by the diversity of projects here, but there is a common ground. Also, the computer is actually a unifying element. It's broken down the traditional distinction between a composer, a musician, an instrument builder, and a sound designer, and we usually find those are simply tasks that are taken on in different phases of a project, often by the same person. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Tom Van Horn. Well, the ultimate task for a computer would be to act as your music teacher. And thanks to the mathematical underpinnings of music, today's PCs can actually listen to you play, tell you what you did right and what you did wrong. And I guess that's the point in the Family Music Center here. Mm -hmm. The computer can teach me to play the piano? Yes, it can. Show me how. Okay. Well, what we're doing is we're actually using artificial intelligence to degrade what the student is playing. And we create a lesson plan on the fly to teach that student how to All play All right, so music. I just logged in before as a brand new user, knowing mm -hmm. nothing. Exactly. And what if you do I do? Look over here, it's showing us recommended pieces. Let's choose Go and Tell Aunt Rhody, which is marked as a level one or okay, a beginning Okay, so that's piece. the baby first thing you learn. Exactly. Let's go into the learn area where our actual lesson system. Okay, so they're the notes I'm supposed to play. Welcome to mm -hmm. the learning area. Voice Our annotation throughout, leading us through using the product. And the little hand at the bottom there is mm -hmm. telling me how to finger this particular piece. Exactly. That's our Magic Hands technology, and it's part of our analysis engine. You actually have a video in here also that actually showed me a real person playing Exactly. It. Can we take a quick look at that? Go over to our demo area. So this would be really useful to see how a person who knows how to play the piano actually uses their hands and fingers mm -hmm. here and what the music ought to sound like. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's try. You, you be the student here and try to play that piece, and I want to see how the computer analyzes your performance. Okay, let's step back into the, into the lesson area. Welcome to the learning area. For a demonstration of this... Okay, we did that bit. So you got to play now, huh? Okay, and again, it's prompting with the green E Play the play. green, the note that's green. Well, that'll give you a good score for that mm -hmm. one. Great. Press next to try that once more. Of course, it's going to have me review that yet okay, again. Okay, now suppose you don't do it so well. I mean, make an intentional mistake. Okay. Okay, that's that was clearly wrong. Good work. Press next. Okay, now to since I've it. signed <laughs> it as an absolute she beginner. She knows you're a real beginner. She doesn't Remember, want to hurt your feelings right now. Exactly. Right the the, the um, analysis the is actually begin. part of the artificial intelligence. And depending on where you are at in using the program, and how, how much you've used the program. It'll give you different feedback based on All what right, it well, thinks we'll keep necessary. going and do it, do it again. I mean, obviously, okay. you don't want to get away with this forever because you're mm -hmm. going to think you're doing it right. So you've got a metronome in the background now. Okay, so you obviously hit mm -hmm. one bad note there. Great. Press next to try that once more. Remember, 
You'll play the right you hand really only. Think I need She's like to get away with murder here. here. Go ahead. I'd slap you on the hands, <laughs> Joe. You need more work on this. <laughs> okay. I guess so, a Press little bit. So she finally had enough. Yeah. Yeah. If you notice over here, the notes the right in red are the notes that I made mistakes on. And begin. over here on the right hand side, it's showing that I had pith, pitch and uh, rhythm action. Yeah, so again, you're a beginner. She's giving you yes. a little bit of slack here, but after a while, anybody exactly. get it right. Now, what's really cool here is I understand that I can import a MIDI song, mm -hmm. and actually it'll adapt to that and teach me how to play a song that other than what's in the, in the library now. Exactly. You can import any MIDI file, and we'll create a lesson plan on the fly for and it. And there's a real high end to this. I mean, you have a full sequencer in here, so if you really get good to this, you can do exactly. a lot of it. Can you show us that real quickly? Sure. In our Family Music Center, we also have Studio, which is a notation-based MIDI sequencer. And so when you get up to this level, you can really do the whole bit and... Exactly. You don't even yeah. really need to be an experienced musician to use Studio. What's the cost to buy this whole package with the keyboard? $299 US price. Not too bad. Joe, thanks a lot. Thank you. Well, as I mentioned earlier, the Internet is a very rich source of information for music fans, musicians, students. Here's our webmaster, Giles Bateman, with a look at some of the music resources available on the net. Thanks, Stuart. There are, in fact, a lot of great music resources online, depending on what exactly you're interested in. Let's start with America Online here. They have a music and sound forum here. This will get you going doing music with your computer. They have software libraries, links to worldwide websites, and uh, links to music and sound companies as well. This, you may notice, happens to be the Macintosh music and sound forum, but the PC music and sound forum, as I switch to it, you'll notice, looks exactly the same. So the only difference is it just is for the other platform. Uh, now let's switch into Netscape, and if you're a musician, then you want to check out uh, YPN's page, Musicians Only, in their music section. I think YPN's a good place to start finding sites for a lot of different things. They catalog a lot of them, and here are a lot of musician sites, in some cases uh, categorized by instruments, music schools, education and therapy, and electronic musicians. Definitely check this out. And uh, last but not least, if you think that your favorite band does not have a page on the Internet, think again. Definitely come check out the Ultimate Band List. They will uh, keep track of as many URLs for home pages and fan pages as they can possibly get their hands on. I'm in the W section now because I'm looking for my favorite band. It's called uh, Whiskey Before Breakfast. And there they are. I click on their link and I get a little bit of a description of the different websites available. And then I can link directly to their page. Uh, Whiskey Before Breakfast, a good band, Celtic rock music as you see here. Definitely look for them, and hey, there's a picture of the band. Thanks, Giles. Time now for our weekly summary of the latest internet and computer news. Here's this week's Random Access Report with Lori Anderson. In the Random Access file this week, IBM is trying to make their computers more living room friendly. The company is including a remote control for web surfing in its upgraded Optiva S line of PCs. The new models will use either 166 or 200 megahertz Pentium processors and feature an upgradable 56K modem. CD-ROM speeds continue to climb. Acer has announced an 18-speed CD-ROM drive. Called the Acer Magic 616A, the drive uses digital server technology. It will be available this month as an internal drive. Web TV and Hewlett Packard will now work together to provide printing capabilities to Web TV subscribers. HP has agreed to supply an application programming interface for printing from the online service and drivers for its printer products. If you receive an email message with the subject reading, you've got to read this, don't. Virus experts McAfee Associates says a new macro virus called ShareFun.A is being spread through this email attachment. If Microsoft Word is launched to read the attached file, your Word documents will be affected. If you use Microsoft Mail, the virus finds three random people in your mail list to automatically send the message to, thus spreading the virus. Microtest has created a new modem of interest to home and business users. Web Etc. allows up to 20 network users to access the Internet at the same time through one phone line using one modem. It also allows home users to link up an extra computer for simultaneous Internet access. It is compatible with all web browsers, email packages, and newsgroup readers. And finally, tax time is upon us. If you don't have a favorite tax prep program, check out the Secure Tax website to prepare your returns free of charge. 
The site gets their money if you use the application to print or electronically file your return. MCI Net customers can e-file for free. That's it for this week's news. Back to you, Stuart. Now for my pick of the week. Form usually follows function when it comes to technology. Somebody comes up with new things to do, then somebody else eventually designs an appliance that incorporates that new functionality. Well, the focus on computing these days is clearly on communications, email, faxes, voicemail, paging, etc. So most of us have collected quite a few pieces of hardware, modems, telephones, pagers, fax machines, answering machines, and so on. But now a company called Global Village has come up with one simple little appliance that packages all that functionality together. This is the Teleport. It's a very sleek little desktop unit that is a speakerphone, a 33-6 modem, a fax machine, and a voicemail system. The Teleport comes with software called Focal Point, which really does act as the focal point for all your electronic communications. You can check for voicemail, faxes, or email all from one screen. You can make outgoing calls, go right to your address book without having to click to another application. You can gather all your email from several addresses in one central inbox. And you can even program this thing to page you when you have new messages. The Teleport also lets you make digital recordings of your phone conversations, and it can automatically tell whether an incoming call is voice or fax, so you can do all your business communications with one phone line. It's the Teleport from Global Village Communications. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. We'll be back here again next week with more of the best in hardware, software, and the Internet. If you need more information on anything you saw on today's show, check out our website at PCTV.com. I'm Stuart Chaffee. We'll see you here next time. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by SoftSource Incorporated, publishers of Pro One Software, educational software for young adults. And by Upside, the business magazine for the technology elite. To order a videotape of this program, call 1-800-916-PCTV. Please ask for tapes by show number and title. And for more help in keeping up with the fast-changing world of personal computing, order the Chaffee Letter. Each month, Stuart writes in detail about topics covered on Computer Chronicles and includes his commentaries on the technology that directly affects how you use your computer. For a videotape or a subscription to the Chaffee Letter, call 1-800-916-PCTV. The Chaffee Letter, your solution to information overload.